Episode two is called Love at First Sight. After the Kylie Minogue song. After the Kylie Minogue song. And I thought one thing through through all of it. Particularly, I think I think I'm gonna think it throughout the series, but I was thinking as a queer woman, straight women are so gay. <laughs> Ah, straight women are gay. Straight women are so gay. Straight women and are I thought women. this, I think this is actually something that's universal for all women, regardless of their sexuality. But I was like, women, female friends, we have these romantic relationships, like these intense, like we're dating and we're exclusive and we territorial. do these things together. And we're territorial. And that like, sort of like, not even like frostiness. I don't think it's frosty. I think it's like warm, hot, like burning resentment that Maggie has underneath every interaction with Nathan. I've really got a crack on. I'm sorry, Nathan. Uh, it was really lovely to see you though. I wish we could catch up properly. Um, but maybe next time. I think that is like such the prickliness of like an ex or a jilted lover, something like that. Like she feels displaced and you can feel that seething underneath her. And I'm like, that is so gay. Hey, hey, hey. That's a portrait of a lady Absolutely. on fire. Oh my God, close female friends, flatmates, etc. I also think that because friendship of that nature usually lasts longer than any relationship, like she, she can, she has every right to look at him and say, you don't know her like I do. Yes, yes. The uh, teddy bear, mm. which honestly, I would love to get. That massive teddy bear that says my best friend is weird after 28 days. 28 oh, days yeah. later to get a bear that says my best friend is kind of stalker territory. Oh, by the way, come see what arrived for Birdie today. Who's it from? Who do you think? I think it, it's also always a red flag whenever your mom or your boyfriend is your best friend. Mm. Yeah. Um, get a real friend. Get a real friend. Marry well, your mom. Although I put it to you, Olga Cock, yeah. that you have been the recipient of gifts in relationships. Oh, I love. Early on in relationships, you get showered with gifts. Do you want, do you want to tell that story? Oh, do I, I can't remember exactly what you got. We were living in Edinburgh together one year. Yes. And I was being courted by a gentleman and he decided to send me a gift a day. A gift a day. And at first, we collectively as a house thought it was the cutest thing in the world. I and didn't. <laughs> but I think, I, I mean, maybe you were hiding it for the first couple of days because at some point, I think day three, you were like, this is so creepy. Please make it yeah, stop. You... And then you were like, I will not sign for the next package. <laughs> like, you can leave it outside. It can burn. I don't give a shit what happens to it. I think there is a deep romance in that, but I think deep romance has no place in adult relationships. <laughs> so... But I think that it was maybe bordering on love bombing in that if someone is that intense to you when they don't know you that well, it's kind of creepy. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, you're clearly projecting. I think that's possibly the only flaw of Nathan and Birdie's relationship at this point. He seems very grateful to finally have a boyfriend. Of course, we know that she's not as sexually experienced as Maggie. And so she's just like, new partner. And there's a bit of excitement in them that I think they're doing the love thing. They're doing the adult thing. They're in a relationship. So that kind of... Think of someone being like, oh my God, have you heard of like boyfriends and relationships <laughs> doing it for the first time? I think it makes Maggie feel very like jaded and like, oh, these kids, 